Hello everyone, my name is Soren and welcome to the 50,000 subscriber Q&A video as requested. I ran a poll on the community tab the other day and you guys said you wanted to see this video before the Megaplex vlog or the Fur Migration vlog. So as much as Slush does not want this video to come first, this is what the audience demands. And I always do what the audience demands as long as, you know, I actually want to do that. If I don't want to do what the audience demands, then I'm just going to do my own thing. It's kind of the whole point of YouTube. I do need to address one thing really quickly. Yes, this video is super late. I am a full-time college student right now, and I also have a full-time job. So I work between homework and regular work like 80 hours a week, and it's kind of exhausting. That's why the videos kind of stopped when I got about halfway through September. My school semester started at the very end of August, and by the time we got about halfway through September, around the time of Megaplex, all of my assignments were coming due around then. So that's why I stopped uh, posting the daily shorts. I do want to keep posting shorts regularly, and I have a whole bunch of shorts ideas saved on my phone that I would love to do. I just need to have the time to do them. But YouTube is still and will probably always be just a hobby for me. And while I do make a little bit of money, it's like 80 bucks a month. It's not, <laughs> it's not pay my rent money. So thank you guys very much for your patience with me. During the school year, the videos are going to come at a slower pace. But not to worry, I do have the furry migration and the Megaplex vlogs not, well, they're not edited yet, but like I have all the footage compiled and I'm ready to edit them. I just have to have the time to do so. But you guys wanted to see this one first, so instead of editing right now, I'm filming. I even put up the fancy lights so that we get all the lighting and, and all the shadows and stuff like that. There's no ceiling light in here for some reason. Who designed this? Anyways, the other thing that I'm gonna have to get out of the way up front is uh, the magic. It's gonna have to be broken for this video, guys. I know, I know you don't wanna see it. You don't wanna see my grimy human hands. You'd much rather see my fluffy, beautiful paws. But all of the questions are on here and I, I can't, can't work it with the paws. So the paws are coming off. All right, there was 114, I think it was when I last looked, comments on the Q&A post on the community tab. I am not going to be responding to all 114 of those because that's a lot for starters. And about half or more of them didn't even have a question in them, which is fine. You didn't need to leave a question, but I'm not going to be featuring the comments in this video that didn't have a question because there was no question and the whole point of a Q&A video was to respond to the questions. The other thing is there were a lot of questions that came up multiple times. So when I was going through screenshotting the comments to reply to, uh, I'm only doing the first one to ask the question. So if you asked a question that somebody else asked, sorry, that's probably why you're not in here. There was, I think, one or two other questions that weren't really appropriate for a video like this or that I wanted to do full videos on at a later date. So if your question doesn't get answered, it might also be because of that. Without further ado, let's get into the questions already, right? Jay Fox. Hi, Jay says, congratulations for the Q&A. How did you come up with your persona? I'd love to hear Soren's creation story. I think this was the question that I got asked most. Please don't feel bad. I did ask, I did see and read all of the comments on there. I'd love to hear Soren's creation story. That's great and all. Unfortunately, the creation story went something like, I'm an Alaskan and I also really like dogs. And I really like orange. So I'm, I'm gonna be an orange dog. The first iteration of my persona was just an orange husky with no blue at all. And everyone constantly thought he was a fox. And I also kind of liked blue and I wanted to add some highlights of another color. So I eventually added some blue and everyone still thinks he's a fox. I'm not a fox, I'm a husky. I like to run, I like to play in the snow. I'm a dog, husky. And, and that's really it, there's not more to it than that. Next question. Suma Wolf 3807 says, yay, congrats Soren. I am really happy to have watched your channel grow with due time. You're a really special furry YouTuber to me because it was you who I first ran into here that introduced the fandom to me. Well, thank you. Outstanding work with your videos. They never fail to lighten and bring joy to my days. For the Q&A, what may be the reason why some anti-furs ironically turn to the furry fandom after ultimately always having bagged on them? Uh, good question. 
my guess would be that it's kind of the same uh, brain function as homophobic people who are secretly gay. It's a little bit of like a shame thing and they don't want to admit it to themselves so they take it out on other people that are like that because they don't want to admit it to themselves and if they acknowledge other people doing that as being you know totally normal people then they don't know how to respond to that in themselves and they're not ready to yet. That's my guess. I don't know if that made sense. I hope it made sense. They also say, bonus, why is your fursona scheme such in, such in, such in close appearance to a Tide Pod, LOL. I was this color first. If you go back and look at my early videos, my earliest videos are from before the Tide Pod memes were ever a thing. I was here first. They stole my colors. Next question is from Mayo Jen. What was your parents' reaction to you being a furry? E.g. their questions, initial thoughts, concerns, past and current opinions. Also, contracts on 50k. Hope you reach 100k soon. 100k would be super cool. I would love to have a, have a play button to put up there. Uh, the first time I talked to them about it, I don't remember exactly how it went. I was pretty young. I don't think they got it. Um, but since then, it's been generally supportive and like, okay, cool, you have a hobby. Like, okay, we're glad you're having fun. Be safe. My mom did make a comment one time that seemed to imply that she thought I was sleeping around at furry conventions, which I'm not. <laughs> But I think that might just be some of the social stigma there. Um, if you're watching this, Mom, I am not. That's not the point. That doesn't happen. Not with me, anyways. I don't. I don't really know or care what other people do. They were there for my fursuit unboxing. Uh, so were my grandparents, actually. And the whole family has just generally been, if not supportive, just like appreciative that I have something that I enjoy and that I have fun doing and is relatively harmless. So yeah, overall I'd say it was a pretty good reaction. Lightning the Wolf says, congratulations on 50K. My questions are what got you into fursuiting? What got you interested in the furry fandom? And do you have any other hobbies or interests besides fursuiting? So what got me into fursuiting? The furry fandom. What got you interested in the furry fandom? Uh, that's a very difficult question to answer because I just kind of always been into the whole anthropomorphic animal thing. So when I found out about it, it was just kind of a natural development of that. <laughs> Do you have any other hobbies, interests besides fursuiting? Yes. I uh, am a huge gardener. I love gardening both indoors and outdoors. I also play a lot of games. I have a gaming channel on YouTube, although I really don't post to it regularly anymore. I also really like the outdoors, hiking, camping, etc. basically anything outside. I also am a huge bookworm. Um, on my main Normie channel, I talk about books and I do videos reviewing books and comparing books to movies and stuff like that. If you're curious about some of that stuff, you should go check out my main channel or my Normie channel. I guess this one's really the main channel at this point because this is the one I put all the time and effort into right now. I also love writing. Um, I am actually a published author. I've written a couple short stories and a couple of poems and I am working on a novel right now, which I hope to finish this year. Finish the writing of at least. Yeah, it's currently National Novel Writing Month and I am working on that. I have about 17,000 words, but my goal is to hit 50,000 words by the end of the month and then hopefully finish the story and like get it into the editing process by the end of the year. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe in the next couple months you'll see me announcing that I'm publishing a book. Wouldn't that be cool? Steam Pony Design says, Hi, just discovered your channel and love your fursuit and just being an all out friendly positive person. My question is, were you nervous to embrace being a furry? I always liked the fandom when I was younger, but being older now, I kind of want to embrace it and make a fursona, but I'm unsure with myself and especially nervous of sharing it publicly. So question, was I nervous to embrace being a furry? Uh, like I just said, it's I kind of always have been, so I wasn't really nervous to. Um, I have been nervous going to conventions on a handful of occasions. Usually it's not, related to being a furry though. It's more related to personal experiences 
both good and bad in the past. I wouldn't say I've ever really been nervous to be a furry. I've just kind of always enjoyed it and I've never really cared what other people think about it. That's just kind of who I am. So yeah, sorry. I don't have very good advice to offer you in that range. Golf Professor says, congrats on 50K, Soren. A big question I have is how do you deal with the stereotypes and stigmas from other people? I have a hard time as a newer person into the fandom. I just don't listen to it because it's not true. Firstly, I've never encountered any of these in person. It's always been online. And I never care what happens online because the internet is not real life. And while it can have a, a effect on your real life, a greater and greater effect even today, it's still not real life. And it's important to remember that. And I didn't do a great job of that when I was younger. I feel like I do a much better job of that now. Um, there's always gonna be people that hate you for who you are. That's just the unfortunate state of the world. And uh, if we spend all of our time focusing on the people who hate us for who we are instead of the people the, instead of the people who love us for who we are, we're gonna have a bad time. So I put all of my energy into the people who love me for who I am and the people who hate me for who I am, I don't care about because they don't care about me. Why should I care about them? It, that's really what it comes down to for me. Short-legged Flamingo says, congrats Soren. I suppose my biggest question is how do you know for sure that you're a furry? I myself have been grappling with the question a bit, and I'm not really sure how to answer it. Depending on who you ask, this answer might be different. For me, the furry fandom is more of a hobby and an interest than it is anything else. It is a huge part of my personality, the real me on the, inside the fursuit head, but it's not who I am. So if for some reason I had to leave the furry fandom behind one day, it would be sad but it wouldn't be extremely difficult because it would be like leaving behind something loved and cherished whose time was over, if that makes any sense. I'm not saying I have any plans to leave. I'm gonna be here as long as I can because I enjoy the people here and I enjoy being here and I enjoy what I do here. How do you know that you're a furry? Really, I think it's just, if you say you're a furry, then you're a furry. That's kind of like, asking, how do I know if I'm into model trains? Are you into model trains? If yes, cool. If not, also cool. Or like like asking if you're a Trekkie, like somebody who's really into Star Trek, are you or are you not? And if you are, cool. If you're not, also cool. It doesn't, at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. It's just a fun time. <laughs> I try to not take it too seriously because I mean, I, I mean, look at me. I'm sitting alone in my apartment wearing a giant piece of foam and faux fur while talking to my camera to eventually post this on the internet and share with other people who appreciate the foam and faux fur and the character that is kind of a emergent from that. Don't take it too seriously. <laughs> if you want to be a furry, cool. If not, also cool. Fear us, Lau? I don't know how you say your name, I'm sorry. Congrats on 50,000 subscribers, Soren. My question is, what are some first steps or advice to take on making a persona? Uh, so as I talked about earlier when I made my persona, I didn't put a ton of thought into it because it wasn't really that big of a deal. And it also just kind of made sense to me and was like, oh yeah, that's the obvious choice for me. I do have some other characters that I've made. I don't spend a lot of time making characters specifically for the furry fandom. I do make a lot of characters within the furry fandom and I make a lot of characters not in the furry fandom. But for a fursona, especially if you want that character to really represent you and not just be a character, um, I'm gonna point you to Finn the Panther. This guy, he's got some great videos on how to make your fursona and what you should consider when you go about that. I'm not the person to ask, go watch his video. I'll also include a link to that down in the description. Yeah, he's a pretty cool YouTuber, you should check him out and uh, go subscribe to him and let him know that I sent you. Kirby1016 says, you did it. I did. Congrats, and I hope to see you grow even higher. Thank you very much. Have you ever furred a dino mask? They seem pretty cool. I have not. I am not artistically inclined in the physical sense. I do like to think that I'm a creative person, but it's all like mentally creative. It's not with my hands. I'm not particularly good with my hands at 
much of anything. <laughs> so I've never actually done the fursuit construction. My fursuit was made by Splinter Fox Productions and it's fantastic. It's held up phenomenally well and I love Splinter Fox and I will happily commission her again when I have the time and money. Lorik Burnison 86 says, congrats on 50K. I do have a question. What inspired your persona and how did you get the name? So we already talked about how I came up with my persona, but how I got the name is actually an even more boring story. I stole it. That's right, I stole my name. When I was a kid, I used to read a lot. One of the book series that I really loved was a book series called The Guardians of Gahul, which is a total furry bait book series for, uh, I would say like late elementary to early middle school age. At least I think that's when I read it. The main character for many of the books of that series is an owl named Soren. And I don't know why, I always really liked the, the name Soren, and I really liked the character of Soren as well. So, I stole the name. That's where the name came from. See, I'm not actually creative, I just like to pretend that I'm creative. <laughs> it's just Astro says, you deserve it and a lot more. Love your content. Here's a question. What is your least favorite part about being a furry and why? My least favorite part of being a furry has got to be uh, the drama. There are so many furries, especially on the internet. It's not so much of a problem or even really a thing I've experienced in person, but on the internet, people will take the tiniest little thing that you've done wrong and blow it up out of proportion. That's my least favorite part of the fandom. But like I said, it's mostly online and I don't really interact with the parts of the furry fandom that do behave like that anymore. It's mostly Twitter. Sorry, the platform formerly known as Twitter. Anyways, yeah, that's my least favorite part of the furry fandom is all of the meaningless drama. When it comes to things like call out posts and cancellations and stuff like that, my thought process is pretty simple. Did the person commit a crime? If yes, then take it to the police, not to Twitter. If they did not commit a crime, then what you have is a personal problem with this person and you should take it to that person. And if they don't wanna resolve it, then don't make it everyone else's problem. There is a little bit of a gray area there where like you might get shoddy business practices or people that are just generally not good people. And what I try to do in those instances is not cancel people, but I will warn my friends and the people that I care about if I see them getting cozy with some of those people. But I think that's how problems should be handled. Did they do something illegal? Take it to the police. Did they do something morally wrong, but not illegal? Well, that's between you and them and, you know, maybe people that you know around them. If they didn't do anything wrong or they just did something that you don't like or that you disagree with, then leave them alone. Seriously, just leave them alone. It's that simple. It's just Astro also asks, what's your favorite thing about the furry fandom and why? My answer to that is basically just gonna be like the diversity of the furry fandom because I will meet people at furry conventions from all over the planet, people from all walks of life, from all different backgrounds who are really interesting, genuine people. And that's another reason that I've stopped doing so much on the internet is because on the internet, anyone can kind of just pretend to be whatever they want to be. Not that that's a bad thing, but a lot of people will take advantage of that. And in person, vast majority of people that I've met in person at furry conventions have been awesome people that I love hanging out with and I want to see again. Positive Tiger Gamer says, congrats on 50,000 mark. Question for Q&A, what made you choose the colors orange, blue, and white for your persona? Uh, well, like I said, it's orange is the best color. Blue is the second best color, and then white is just kind of the color of huskies, like on their tummies and stuff. So that's how I came up with that. In hindsight, if I ever do like a full redesign of Soren, or I do a uh, transition to an entirely different like main character, uh, I'm probably going to take out some or all of the white, because it is so difficult to keep it clean and like nice, shiny, vibrant white looking. Nalwak says, congrats on 50K, well deserved. My first question for the Q&A, if you had to make a new fursona that wasn't a husky, what animal would you choose? Uh, I would choose a red panda, and the only reason I have for that is because red pandas are freaking adorable, and I love them so much. Uh, back in March of this year, 
Slush and I went to the San Diego Zoo with some of our friends that lived in San Diego and we got to see the red pandas. We were not there for very long for a whole host of reasons. So we pretty much took the bus tour and then went to see the red pandas and then had to leave. And uh, I actually have a stuffed red panda from the San Diego Zoo. And I also have a red panda character that I use on occasion. He's not my main persona. He is a character that I would love to get a fursuit made of at some point. Um, I don't have any money right now though, so that's gonna have to wait until I do have some money. Erflalal says, great to see that you hit 50K. Question, if you had to live somewhere in the world other than the United States, where would you go and why? This is a really tricky question for me, uh, and this is probably the one that I spent the most time thinking about in the lead up to filming this video. I still don't have a great answer. <laughs> I would either go somewhere in the South Pacific, a South Pacific island nation. Um, the first place that comes to mind is Guam, because I lived in Guam when I was in first grade and it was pretty great. But Guam is technically part of the United States, so I don't think I can count that. Maybe I would try somewhere like Tuvalu or Fiji or Tahiti or Bora Bora. I think anywhere in like the tropical South Pacific would be phenomenal. I love tropical uh, fruit and tropical fish and I'm not a big fan of the ocean, so that might be tricky. Maybe somewhere like the Northern Island of New Zealand would be good. I've also never been to New Zealand, so I also don't know if I would actually like it there. There are also a couple of places in Europe that I would love to go to. See, we're thinking about it like, I can't live in the United States anymore for some reason, so I have to go somewhere. Uh, the Czech Republic in Central Europe would be a great place. I've been there several times, I love it. Switzerland, I was in Switzerland this summer and it was also fantastic. I had a ton of fun there. As for some places I haven't been but would love to go to and I expect that I would enjoy, um, Greenland, Iceland, Norway, Sweden, Finland. A bunch of my mom's side of the family is from Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Maybe somewhere over there. It'd be neat to see if we still have relatives over there, particularly in Finland. That's where a lot of my mom's side of the family comes from. So, yeah, either somewhere really cold, like Scandinavia, Iceland, or Greenland, or somewhere really warm, like the South Pacific, Fiji, Tuvalu, Tahiti, places like that. Complete opposites, but that's the best I'm gonna be able to do right now. Laser the Shark Fox asks, what was your most embarrassing suiting experience slash moment? Also, congrats on 50K. I don't know if I've ever had an embarrassing fursuiting moment or experience, but I have had some that were very uncomfortable. And the first one that comes to mind, I actually already did a video about, so that'll be linked up here. Uh, Nas Hyena was there and basically saved me from, I don't know what was gonna happen, but that guy was clearly not safe to be around. So thank you very much, Nas. <laughs> Infamous Wolf 6999 says, hi, congrats for 50,000 subscribers. I have a question. What made you want to be a furry and how did you get the courage to go to a college in furry costume Keep up the great work. Can't wait for you to hit 100,000. Uh, okay, so question, what made you want to be a furry? Just kind of already, always was. Uh, how did you get the courage to go to college in fursuit? I just kind of did it. <laughs> uh, the very first time I did it, it was, I had class on Halloween and I asked my professor in one of my classes a couple, like a week beforehand, I was like, hey, can I wear a costume for Halloween? And he was like, yeah, of course, be awesome, wear a costume. And then in a class after that, a professor asked, was like, hey, anyone want to wear a costume for Halloween? Please do, it makes the day more interesting. So I did. Since then, I've worn my fursuit to, around campus and to my classes a few more times. The most recent time, that one was mainly, again, I had class on Halloween and my college professor in my meteorology class specifically went out of her way to encourage us to wear costumes, so, I wore my costume. It, it was never really a matter of like courage for me. It was just like, it's Halloween. You wear costumes on Halloween. I have a very nice costume. I will wear it for Halloween. Blue Fox 5505 says, congrats on 50K subs, Soren. For the Q&A, when would you say is the best time of year to enjoy ice cream? Firstly, when it's hot out. Secondly, when it's cold out. And thirdly, 
whatever you feel like it. I am from Alaska, as I have said before, and Alaskans actually consume more ice cream per capita than any other state. Take that, other states. Vertical Koala 1264 says, I have some questions and gives me five questions. So we're gonna run through these really quickly. Number one, when is your birthday? April 5th. Will you do a cover of Into Each Life Some Rain Must Fall by the Ink Spots? No, because I've never heard that song and I'm not a very good singer and I don't really do cover music anymore. I used to, but not anymore. Three, what's your favorite horror movie? Uh, Krampus is pretty good. I do like Krampus. I don't know that I would call it my favorite though. Cabin in the Woods is pretty good. The scariest ones, I think. The First Conjuring, I think, is one of the scariest ones. And then Dawn of the Dead is really good. I don't know, pick one of those. I, horror is not really one of my favorite genres, so I don't tend to watch horror movies a ton. I do like them on occasion, but I don't think any of my favorite movies are horror movies. When did you realize you were a furry? Basically as soon as I could think. Kind of covered that earlier. Will you do a fun video on misheard song lyrics with your friends? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, like a video where we talk about song lyrics that we misinterpreted or something? Whew. All right, five questions answered. Next one. Blue Paw says, what's your favorite video game if you play any? Congrats to, by the way, you definitely deserve it. Uh, my favorite video game is definitely RimWorld. Um, it's an indie game from Ludion Studios. You can get it on Steam. I think it's 30 or $40. There's a couple of DLC as well, which are, I think, 10 to 20, maybe $30 each as well. They are all absolutely worth it. I have like 2,000 hours in this game. I love it to death. A close runner-up is the game The Long Dark by Hinterland Studios, another indie game on Steam. I also love that one as well. I like the Civilization games. I like The Sims obvious ones like Minecraft. I used to really like Apex Legends. I don't really play it anymore. Oh, and then city builder games like SimCity and City Skylines. Yeah, I think that answers the question, hopefully. I'm gonna do my best with this name. If I get it wrong, I apologize. Peter Koretsek, 9077, says, first of all, congrats on the milestone. And for the question, do you know the origin of your surname? It sounds a bit Slavic. And if you don't mind a bonus one, I picked up on the fact that you visit Czech Republic from time to time. What town exactly? Thanks if you answered my question, and even if you didn't, there is a lot of them. There is a lot of them, and I'm trying to answer them all, and my mouth is already hurting a lot. I had my wisdom teeth taken out uh, eight, nine days ago, and uh, my jaw hurts. Do you know what time it is? It's tooth hurty. On to Peter's questions. Uh, do you know the origin of your surname? It sounds a bit Slavic. Yes, so Sladkovic is not my real last name, but uh, my dad's side of the family, where my surname comes from, were some Russian Jews that lived in Crimea uh, in the 1920s. And when the Bolshevik Revolution started happening, they got uh, kicked out of there. And so the family fled and settled in three main places. Uh, Germany, France, and the United States. The family that settled in Germany and France, we don't know what happened to them. It's, they probably died in the Holocaust. We don't know. My dad's family moved to the United States and didn't want to be identified as Jews. So they changed the last name from Sladkovic to just Sladko, and then didn't tell anyone that they were Jews for like two or three generations. So when I was coming up with the last name for Soren, I don't even remember why I was. There was something, it was probably something I was writing where I needed to have a last name for him for some reason. And I went back to the original surname, Sladkovic, of the family from way back when we lived in Russia, Crimea, Ukraine area. And that's where that comes from. So yes, Peter, you are dead on. It is a bit Slavic because that's where it's from. <laughs> and then the bonus question picked up on the fact that I visit the Czech Republic from time to time. What town exactly? Um, so I've been to a number of towns in the Czech Republic. Most of the time I've spent in the Czech Republic has been in Prague and in a small town called Avlichko Brod. And I, I am doing my best to pronounce these names <laughs> because Czech is very difficult for an American. Beyond Avlichko Brod and Prague, there are some other towns that I've been to. I just haven't done a ton of stuff there. Um, those are Humpolets, Yelava, uh, Cheske Budovice, 
the last time I went to the Czech Republic, we went up and we rafted the Voltava River out of the mountains that are in the southwest of the country, uh, basically all the way back to Česky Budovice. That trip was a ton of fun. I love the Czech Republic. It's a great country. The people there are super nice and I, it's a great place. I would love it. Oh boy, we got another one with five questions on it, so I'm gonna rattle these off quickly, and I'm gonna probably keep rattling off the rest of the questions because my teeth are really starting to hurt. Lucas Paytown, pay to, pay to win, Lucas Pay to Win Broski has five questions, and I'm gonna rattle them off real quick. How much money was your fursuit? Uh, it was about $2,500 if you include shipping. It's about 23, 24 without the shipping. How long does it generally take to make one of your long form videos? This is gonna be a bit of an exception because this one doesn't involve a script. The scripted ones, the better part of a day or two up to a week to write and rewrite and edit the script. Editing takes, you can call it about an hour for every five to 10 minutes of actual final video footage that you guys see. Um, and then the sort of longest ones to make are the convention vlogs because well, it's a convention vlog, so it's usually a whole weekend, plus all of the editing. So a general rule of thumb that I would say is basically for every five to 10 minutes of video that you guys see, there's at least an hour of editing and then probably some other work in the background. How many conventions have you been to? Oh boy, uh, I counted them all up the other day. In 2017, FAU, Aquatifer, MFF, in 2018, I went to BLFC, Fralandia, Anthrocon, Denver, Anthro Northwest, and MFF. In 2019, I went to Fralandia, Anthrocon, HCFC, Denver, Megaplex, Fervana, Aquatifer, Anthro Northwest, and MFF. And then this year, I've been to Denver, Furry Migration, and Megaplex. 21? 22? I think it's 21 <laughs> in total. And that's obviously been since 2017 when I went to the first one. Uh, next question. Will you ever get revenge on Shep for stealing your camera? Oh yes, I will. Number five, when did you join the fandom? That is really hard to answer. Like I talked about earlier, I basically kind of always was. I just didn't realize it. Michael Katzenbach says, very simple question, but I'm curious. What's your favorite ice cream flavor and why? My favorite ice cream flavor is mint chocolate chip. I really like the mint flavor, and I also like chocolate, but only in small amounts, and mint chocolate chip does both of those things very well. Jorge Munoz says, your best memory from Alaska. Congrats, by the way. This is the other question that I spent way too much time thinking about, and I honestly don't have a good answer for. I have so many good memories from Alaska. I lived there for about two thirds of my entire life, so most of my good memories are from Alaska. Just thinking about it right now, I've had a lot that have come to mind over, over the last couple days that I've been thinking about the, these questions in this video. The one that has repeatedly come to mind it was the time my friends Michael and Josh and I uh, were just being silly late at night and we decided we wanted to go poke around an abandoned hotel that was like a four hour drive from our house in the middle of the night. So we got up and drove four hours in the middle of the night to this abandoned hotel in the middle of nowhere and poked around. And it was an abandoned hotel in the middle of nowhere. But we had a fun time and it was a little spooky and yeah, I don't know. That's that's one that comes to mind. K. Saler von Neisty says, congrats man. Um, do you wanna go to Austria one day or Germany? If yes, why or why not? I would love to go back to Austria or Germany. I have been to both already. Austria once, Germany at least a couple times. I The only place in Austria that I've been to was Salzburg, but we spent a whole day, basically a day and a half. We got into Salzburg one night, stayed in the hotel for two nights, and in between we spent the whole day in Salzburg seeing all the stuff to see in Salzburg, and then the next morning we left. I have been to Germany a few times. Unfortunately, it's mostly been on the way to other places. I have actually been to places in Germany, but I haven't been to any touristy things or uh, like famous things that you'd want to see. But yes, I would love to go back and visit some more. Uh, why? Because there's a ton of things to see in Austria still that I didn't. When I went to Switzerland this summer, we went to Italy and France as well. We basically were staying in Switzerland. We saw a bunch of stuff in Switzerland. 
but we also went to France and also to Italy. Uh, this was with Slush, by the way. We were supposed to go to Europa Park. They went to Europa Park. I was sick that one day, so I did not get to go to Europa Park in Germany. And I am so mad that I missed it because I really wanted to go. It sounded like a ton of fun. And Slush had been talking it up to me for like a year about how great Europa Park was. And then the one day I was sick for the whole 15 days that we were there was the one day that we were supposed to go to Europa Park. So yes, I would love to go back to Austria or Germany. GG Polben. When is a gaming channel making its comeback? <laughs> Whenever I have time, I would, like I said earlier, I would love to be able to run the gaming channel full time, um, but that takes a lot of time and I don't have a lot of time because I work full time and I'm also a college student full time. So that's already two full time jobs right there. Probably not anytime soon, unless I win the lottery or something, that would be, then, then I'll can bring back the gaming channel for sure. Lenkin Owo says, what song is always stuck in your head? And I really resented this question because the entire time I was setting up to film this video, I had the song Stuck Inside Your Head by Julian Smith and Jeffrey Dallas, specifically the remix of it, but don't look it up. I'm t do not. I see you going to search for it. Don't do it because it is really well written to stick in your head. And now whenever I hear the song, whenever I hear the words stuck in your head, that song is stuck in my head and it drives me crazy. Don't look it up. But if you want to, it's Jeffrey Dallas's Stuck Inside Your Head, specifically the remix. It's V9914 says, kind of new fan. Do you have a job? If so, what is it? Love your, vi lo love your brother. Am I allowed to say that? <laughs> Uh, yes, I do have a job, like I said before. I work at a hotel, that, that's it. Um, I'm also a full-time college student. I am working my way towards a career in the airline industry. I would also love to be a professional writer, like a novelist, which I have talked about earlier a little bit in this video. I don't get paid to do that yet, so I can't really call it a job. I can call myself a writer though, because I am a published writer. Vinny Owlworth says two questions. How did you come up with a fox as your persona? Not a fox, it's a husky. Would you ever like an owl demon persona? Owl, I would totally be cool with. Like I mentioned earlier, I stole the name Soren from the owl from the Guardians of Google, Gar Guardians of Google books. Yeah. Uh, demon, I do not want to be. Zonks7136 says, question, do you have a partner or are you single? I do have a partner. I am not single. Slick Chickens says, do you like classic cars? My two favorite classic cars are Lola and Ghost Rider's car. And they had a chase scene in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., a red 69, Cor er, a black 69 Charger and a red 67 Corvette, two very beautiful cars. And the chase scene with them in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Mwah, chef kiss, beautiful, love it. Corruption Gaming says, let's go 50K. Okay, here's the burning question. Plain, you are the am scared of R. Yes, am confirm. Huh? I'm assuming that this is asking if I'm scared to be on planes or scared of planes. No, I have a pilot's license. So, no. I wouldn't be a very good pilot if I was scared of being on planes. Oh, and that was the last question. <sighs> All right, my teeth really hurt. I need to go put some ice on my face now. Uh, my dogs probably also really wanna go outside. So I'm gonna call the video there. Thank you guys very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you learned a little bit about me and I hope I answered all the questions that you guys had. If you have some more questions that I didn't answer, leave them down in the comments and I'll respond to them when I have some time. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video, which will be either Furry Migration or the Megaplex vlog. One of the two. Uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Please still be recording. Yay.